Okay, Steven, I, I just asked you, you know, what are, what are the toughest competitors you've competed against and maybe some tough competitors you've seen? Who's the toughest person and, and best competitor you've competed against? Um, I'd probably say uh, Kerry McCoy and I, we had battles. Uh, early on, he, he was just dominating me, and then I was able to close the distance a little bit and then catch up to him, and then he was able to, to re, reclose the distance and jump back ahead of me, and so we had a, a good battle, and uh, if it wasn't for football, we could have kept, kept it going, but uh, thankfully, I, I went down a different path. So when you look at him, what was the difference that you said you went back and forth with him? Obviously, the rules were different then, and you explained the rules situation. When you look at the rules now, obviously, I think you would have been like the guy. You maybe never would have gone to the NFL had they given you the push out, because you're pretty good at pushing people out. Yeah, I was good at going forward, but uh, I, I, I don't really think I. Um, I guess uh, gotta gotta find the right word, but I, I don't think I, I studied people like I should have. I just said this is what I'm going to do to my opponent, and they're going to have to deal with me. I'm not going to worry about what they're doing. And that was probably the biggest error I made um, looking back. I should have looked a lot harder at uh, different opponents and say, okay, I'm, you know, scout them a lot better. And that's something I learned in the NFL. They scout everything. And so I think when I was wrestling, it was kind of like, this is my style. This is what I'm going to do to everybody. And uh, it didn't work. What was the difference? Like you said, that the parterre was the big difference for you and Kerry. And you didn't study that. And he ultimately beat you with the leg lace is what you're saying. When you, when you look back at that and the scouting aspect of it and the rules changed now from then to now, you know, was that the undoing, Kerry being more of a student of the game than you? I think so. Um, when, when I was competing for the, the World Championship, um, I knew I needed to work on my gut wrench defense. So I, I didn't even work on top parterre the whole camp. I just, every time we did a top bottom, I just had one of them big strong guys, Tully Thompson, De uh, Erickson, uh, there's a bunch of guys in there. Uh, uh, Sean Haig, he was there, and they just got the gut wrench on me, and I would fight it as hard as I could. And that, that was my strategy. I said, I, I, I want to go on my feet, and I want to work on uh, bottom parterre. I didn't, could care less about the top because I, I didn't have enough time to learn um, something that, that would probably work on everybody. And then uh, the years later, I kind of had the same uh, strategy. And, and Kerry, he developed, uh, in, he had a very good leg lace, and he was able to use it against me and uh, really. I, th I think that was a difference in, in Dallas for the, uh, the Olympic trials. So from 99 winning the world title to running everybody off the mat and hitting those sick double legs that you were to, to 2000, the leg lace and ultimately parterre defense of the leg laces, what end did you from, from not getting into uh, Sydney Olympics, huh? I think so. And also, like, you can't take anything away from Kerry. He did a great job, and uh, he won it and fair and square. And, and uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was definitely a wake-up call, and, and I stayed up the – the entire entire night, watch the sun come up, and said it's uh, it's the next day. So it's still here. It's not the end of the world. So. so and then at, at that point, you started moving forward with football. Well, no, I, I continued wrestling for one more year. Kerry got me again, and then a football opportunity just came came out of the blue. I was in uh, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, at Bruce Baumgartner's heavyweight camp, and Matt Gafari said, "Hey, Steve, I know I know an agent uh, for football. You've talked about wanting to do it." And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to." And uh, he lives here in Cleveland and his name is Neil Cornrich and I came down here I worked out for him and some other guys for about a week and then he called up coach Belichick who he represents also and uh, said hey I got this guy please do me a favor work him out and so I think it was July 13th or 14th I went and worked out for those guys and they said come on back uh, next week if you pass conditioning test you're into camp and so it, it just kind of whirlwind uh, just out of the blue very fortunate. When you got, okay, so then you move on 2001, you go from wrestling to an NFL practice squad, right? Immediately, was it practice squad or did they put you right on the roster? Well, I, uh, I got released week three in uh, training camp. That Coach uh, Belichick and Scott Peely, they, you know, bring your playbook, come on in. So I show up and they say, hey, uh, we love everything about you, but you don't know how to play football. We can't use a spot on the team for you. And so I said, all right, you know, thank you. And uh, they told me also, Next year in the offseason, we want to bring you back because we, we like, we think you have some potential. And, you know, I, I didn't really know if they were telling the truth or not. They, they might say that to all the guys, you know, you watch that hard knocks, they say nice stuff to people when they're cutting them. So I, I didn't know. And uh, then I, I went home a week later, the Eagles called me. I was on their practice squad for 12 weeks. And then the Patriots wanted me for the next year. And so they put me on their active roster. Um, 
in December of uh, 2001. Okay, so moving forward, now you're in the football realm. Kerry McCoy just got the best of you, and, and you know the football opportunity comes out of the blue. Who is the toughest football competitor you've ever maybe had to block or competed against on the other side of the defense? Well, I think you know there's so many guys on my on my team that I played with that just would not lose. And uh, you talk about uh, a guy like Teddy Bruschi. This guy, he just fierce, fierce competitor. Also was a wrestler in high school. And then you got you know a guy like Tom Brady who he, he just has a chip on his shoulder from from high school to college to, to now. It's like you know he has everything going, every reason to kind of sit back and and uh, just take it easy. But he still wants it every. Every play in practice, every play in the game, and he's just just refuses to lose. And so, guys like that, it's it's great to be around and uh, great to associate with them and learn from them and, and try to be equally as com competitive uh, with them and uh, next side by side with them. Had you been able to take maybe some lessons from them and watching their preparation and applied it to wrestling, do you think things maybe would have been a little different in 2000 in Dallas? Uh, it could have been. Uh, that's the one thing in football they really uh, game plan. And so you sit there and, you know, you see a guy like uh, uh, Peyton Manning or Tom Brady, they've watched every play of the defense multiple times, probably from the year, like five years ago. I mean, they, they've, they've watched everything. They, they know what's coming and uh, just, just have that much kind of preparation is, is something that probably would have helped me a lot uh, back in the wrestling days. Okay, overall, football, wrestling, who is the ultimate competitor of everyone? Whether you competed with him, saw him compete, or who's the ultimate competitor of everyone you've seen? Uh, man, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with John Smith on that one. He just refuses to lose, man. That guy, John Smith. We were playing basketball. Uh, you know, he's he's about five foot eight. I'll give him a couple inches. <laughs> I'm six foot four, and he, you know, he just so pissed off, and that's why he won all his world championships and gold medals and. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say, like I said, I, I think wrestling, you got to compete a little harder because you have to make a lot more sacrifice. You have to make weight. You can't just show up and put on your uniform and play. You have to make weight. Talk so. about that difference, the weight difference. I was, I've been wanting to ask you this. Two, was it 264 when you guys were, were competing? Oh, it was 286. 286 okay, even 286 because you're, you're a huge guy. 286 to NFL playing weight. How much of a difference was that for you not having to cut weight? Uh, well, I didn't have to cut weight. Uh, so you were good at 286. Yeah, I was. 264. Uh, would you have had to cut? Pro probably not. I was two. I was about 260, 265 my senior year in, in college, and so I tried to put on weight uh, as as we went because um, I had up to 286. I wanted to have the biggest advantage I could. So. What What did the Patriots tell you, you had to play it? Um, if you can get your job done, they don't really care. They'll just put a weight down there. <laughs> <laughs> so they they give you 305, and whether you're 295 or well, you got to be under 305 or you get fined. But, uh, but yeah, if you're two, 295 and you can get the job done, they're, they're, they're happy. But if you're you know, 280 and getting run over, then you better gain a little bit of weight. <laughs> what was your NFL playing weight? Uh, my weight was listed at 305. So sometimes I'd be 290, sometimes I'd be 305. And I'd just kind of go up and down. You never went over the 305? Um, There's a couple times where I was uh, about 310. But if we had a weigh-in, they'll tell you a day or two before, I'd, I, I could get it down. So. Okay. I tried, whenever I, we were playing real big guys, they like to try to run over you. I tried to get get about five, ten more pounds on me, so I could hunker down. And the the smaller guy, quicker guys, I'd try to you know do a little more cardio that week and, and get the weight down. Have you lost weight since leaving the NFL? I did, and then I put it back on. So I'm I'm right about 305, 300, 305. Do you feel comfortable walking around like that? I do, but uh, I just got to figure out something that motivates me. No no one's chasing me anymore, so there's no reason to run. But I got to figure out some reason too. <laughs>